Welcome everyone and thank you for taking the time to participate in COBA Flooring's first CPD webinar on specifying entry mapping in the built environment. I hope everyone can hear me okay and please let me know if by using the chat feature. Today I'll be going through the following subject areas after which there'll be an opportunity to ask any questions so please make a note of any queries you have throughout this presentation and I'll do my very best to answer them afterwards. So without further ado, let's start. The first part of the webinar should take around 30 minutes and the key takeaways are the benefits of ent entrance matting, so why we use it, best design practice of entrance matting and it really doesn't have to be boring and maintaining compliance with regulation. So who is COBA Flooring? Well, in brief, COBA Flooring is a specialist commercial flooring division of COBA, which itself is an international group of manufacturing businesses founded over 50 years ago. With its headquarters in Leicestershire, which is where I'm speaking from today, the group now stretches across the globe into countries such as South Africa, Germany, Romania, and Slovakia. We have been manufacturing floor mats for nearly 40 of those years, and in doing so, we've picked up a little bit of knowledge along the way. So why entrance matting? Slips and trips cost the industry more than £500 million per year, and most accidents occur when the floor is wet and slippy, and this can easily happen when the right matting hasn't been specified. In 2016 to 2017, slips accounted for 29% of reported injuries in the workplace, and if legal action is taken, a huge cost can be applied. If an entrance is poorly specified, it can lead to high maintenance and cleaning costs because dirt and moisture will be carried far into the building. This can also lead to internal floor surfaces being damaged and end up needing replaced earlier than anticipated. Floor coverings can count up to 60% of a building's total cleaning and maintenance cost. Industry guidelines suggest that it costs an estimated £500 to remove one kilo of dirt once inside a building. As we all know, the UK has a lot of rain and it's possible for one person to walk in 0.58 grams of dirt per day. So this means that in just 20 days or one working month, 1,000 people would generate 11 kilos of dirt which would in turn cost £5,800 worth of cleaning. Ideally, entrance matting needs to be thought about at the beginning of a project to ensure the correct product is chosen and the budget is there for a suitable entrance system for the area and the following risks are decreased. Safety in any building is vital and entrance matting plays a critical function in helping to reduce the risk when walking onto smooth floors. Entrance matting can either be installed into a recessed well or laid to surface. When the matting is laid to surface, wheelchairs and pushchairs need to be taken into consideration to ensure the matting doesn't become a trip hazard. If the matting is installed into a recessed well, the matting must not sit too proud above the frame or the existing floor finishes around it, such as the ceramic tiles or the carpet tiles. Part M of building regulations state that floor surface materials should not impede on the movement of wheelchairs. For example, coir or coconut matting is still really popular, however, it's actually not DDA compliant. There are some regulations in place when it comes to entrance matting. According to BS 7935, the installation needs to be taken into consideration to ensure the frames don't sit too proud in the recess well. The matting must not sit too proud either, as both of these could be a trip and fall hazard. As part of BS 8300, the building needs to meet the needs of disabled people. As previously, as previously mentioned, some products such as coir, is not DDA compliant and some mats will be laid to surface and care needs to be taken when looking into particular products when specified. 
So every building really does need an entrance map. So whether you're designing a school or a leisure centre or an office, all of these do need entrance mapping. No matter what, first impressions really do count. Entrance mapping really doesn't have to be boring and in the 21st set century there is so much choice available in terms of the style of the system, the type of material and the design options. This makes it possible to combine style and creativity with functionality and practicality. Entrance mapping is, after all, very often one of the first aesthetic features of a building that a visitor makes contact with on entry. Entrance matting should therefore become an integral part of a building's interior design. Cobra Flooring now manufacture their own logo mats in the UK and in South Africa. We have dedicated machinery for cutting rolled carpet products to make truly bespoke and eye-catching designs. We've even had the opportunity to manufacture a logo mat for Salford City Football Club their VIP and hospitality entrance. So, who says entrance matting has to be a rectangle? The image you see in this recent project at Glasgow College where the interior, the interior needed to reflect the vibrancy of its surroundings. We're really pleased to be associate, associated with this project as it was shortlisted for the Reba Sterling Prize last year. We worked alongside Sir Robert McAlpine building contractors and we manufactured and installed over 100 square metres of matting for this project. Our UK manufactured aluminium system, Plan A, has a number of inserts available. For external use, we recommend hard-wearing nylon brushes and or PVC inserts. Both of these options are perfect for scraping the soles of feet. For internal use, we recommend nylon or polypropylene carpet, depending on footfall, which between them, there are 20, they are available in 22 different colours. When I say depending on footfall, nylon is a much more durable and absorbent material. Industry guidelines dating back to the 90s suggests that there are three grades of footfall, resulting in varying lengths of suggested matting. Buildings are graded by the number of crossings they receive each day, from 78 per hour for smaller facilities to 800 or more for very busy locations, for example, shopping centres. COBA has revised these guidelines based on our own experience. I personally visit many buildings and don't think they have enough entrance matting. They may have specified a premium aluminium entrance mat, but then they require lots of loose day mats afterwards and throughout the building, and this is simply because the matting isn't long enough. This may seem obvious, but the more matting you have, the more dirt is removed. For buildings that see over 5,000 people daily, COBA would recommend 9 to 12 linear metres of matting which is roughly six footsteps. You can see in the table the types of buildings that fit into these different categories. On the right hand side of this slide, you will notice the icons we use to indicate light to heavy duty traffic. Supermarkets will take medium wheel traffic and COBA have various products in the range that have been tested to withstand this type of traffic. High heels need to be taken into consideration as some mats with holes can cause a trip hazard. The image on this slide is taken at a busy shopping centre in Milton Keynes called Centre MK. COBA recommends that when it's accessible to zone your entrance matting to enhance performance. Zone 1 is used externally where the mat is open to all the elements and sometimes referred to as primary matting. A robust scraper is used to remove dirt particles and the mat will have open hole surface to allow debris to fall through. Zone 2 is for the intermediate space between the outside and inside such as a foyer or a porch. 
The product chosen for this zone should be very coarse, but also have some carpet, as this will be required to move, remove moisture. Products chosen in this area vary from an aluminium system, modular in interlocking tiles, or even hard-wearing carpet tiles. This pro product is sometimes referred to as secondary matting. Zone 3 is the interior matting, and the product chosen for this zone would be a high-performance carpet only, as its main use is to remove any excess or remaining dust or dirt and to dry the public's feet. When you are looking at applying zones of matting on a project, you must ensure that you have taken the environment into consideration and if any contaminants could be dragged into the building. Zoning may not always be achievable, and if this is the case, loose laid mats can be used to maximise the matting. So here, are, here are four key types of entrance matting systems, which all have their own individual design, shapes and configurations. For example, our aluminium system is made to bespoke sizes, whereas our modular tiles, for example, come as a standard size. As previously mentioned, Cobra Flooring manufacture their own aluminium system in the UK. The rails are linked together with PVC strips, which are extremely heavy duty, and this matting is predominantly used for Zone 2, but also Zone 1, with the PVC scraper or brush inserts. This product is manufactured to bespoke sizes and is available in two profile heights, 12mm and 17mm, and these are both dependent upon the depth of the recessed well. This is another image taken from City College of Glasgow. Other projects where we have installed our Plan A vary from Lidl Supermarkets, Gloucester Barracks for Kia Construction, and BT Lockside in Edinburgh. Our interlocking tiles, or also known as the Premier Range, are based on a tile made from 100% recycled PVC, and they are very easy to install. A variety of inserts can be chosen for these tiles, and this again is dependent upon traffic. This is an ideal map for Zone 2 with a carpet insert, or alternatively it can be used in Zone 1 with rubber inserts. We have installed our Premier range into various industries, which vary from Tesco, Hamleys, Snow Hill train station in Birmingham, and the image on this slide was actually taken at Leicester High Cross Shopping Centre. Our range of carpet entrance matting is a popular solution for Zone 3. Most of our carpet matting materials are also used as inserts into our aluminium or interlocking tile systems, which is great from a design perspective, as you can actually have consistency of colour and material throughout the entrance. Loose lay mats are really not recommended for high traffic areas, and they're normally used as a temporary solution. We have loose lay products in the range that, that are ideal for internal and external use. So generally, entrance matting is installed into a recess well, but occasionally a mat well isn't formed, and Cobra do have beveled edging available for most of our products. A beveled edge would be a necessity to ensure the mat isn't a trip hazard. As you can see on this slide, there are a few examples of how our matting systems can be installed. When being installed into a recessed well, we recommend a couple of screws are placed in the matting to ensure it doesn't lift. Our Plan A matting has a ramped edge available when it needs to be laid to surface. On slide 21, we showed our Plan A matting with the PVC extrusions. We manufacture these to have do two different constructions, open and closed. Open construction is best suited for external use, the dirt falls through. Closed construction, 
is recommended for internal use because the debris sits on top of the mat until, until hoovered off as part of the cleaning and maintenance. Both our Plan A and Premier tiles have an open or closed construction options. Our entrance matting systems all have various materials which all have different properties. For example, our Alba matting is a premium carpet because it's made from nylon, which is extremely hard wearing, highly absorbent and crush resistant. I'd recommend some time is spent looking into these various materials. We also have various articles on our blog. You must ensure the lines of matting run perpendicular to the direction of traffic, and this is actually really crucial. They need to run this specific way to ensure the matting's function is optimised. Cobra wants to make your life as easy as possible, which is why we have created an online product selector and a selector that's also available in our brochure. You can determine what products you require by filtering the various options. We also have our warranties available in the brochure. However, if you're still not sure, you are more than welcome to give our technical team a call to discuss this further. All our products are BIM Level 2 approved and they can be downloaded either off our website and that's by using Revit or IFC format. You can also find all of our specifications on the Reba product selector and the MBS library. So, to recap, I've gone through the following subjects. Care and time needs to be taken when specifying entrance matting to ensure specifying proper performance and lifespan. Ensure floor levels are flush for accessibility. Entrance matting really doesn't have to be boring. You can be creative with the design or use colour and shape. Entrance matting must have at least 2.5 metre in length for most buildings. You can calculate this by using the footfall. There are different types of entrance matting to ensure you consider traffic levels and main contaminants. You need to prepare and know if the building will have a mat well or if the customer doesn't mind having the matting laid to surface. Which material will be most effective? And you can use zones to tackle contaminants that may be present in the building and use zoning to reduce costs. All of our products are BIM Level 2 compliant and the objects are available to download off our website. We also have products in the National BIM Library. So, that concludes the first part of the webinar. If anyone has any questions, please can you use the chat feature to fire them over to me and I'll do my very best to answer. What has been my favourite project and why is one of the questions. Um, I probably have to say that the City College of Glasgow um, was one of my favourite. It was a two-phase project and we installed both of these areas. Um, it took a long time actually working alongside the architect on this and we recommended bespoke logo mats to ensure we manufactured the matting within the time scale provided. The project actually had over 100 square metres of matting so we are really proud of the quality and the service that we provided on this project. What is the benefit of using the Premier tile system over aluminium mats? I would say that because the tiles are made from 100% recycled PVC, they're really easy to install on site, um, especially when you have these funky shapes. Um, what's also good about the product is that if an area or a tile wears quicker or becomes damaged, it's easy just to replace one or a couple of them rather than having to replace the whole area.
Okay, well, if that's everything, I just want to say thank you again for joining our first CPD webinar. I hope that it's been really informative, and I really look forward to working alongside all of you again. After this presentation, we will send it across onto your email, but if you do have any further queries or questions, please do not hesitate to contact me, and thank you again for your time.